Read between the lines is on. Come and get read. <laughs> but, um, Mickey Fax versus DNA. Thought it was a cool battle. But Mickey lost every round. Yeah, so 3 0. Yeah, 3 0 DNA. DNA. Um, Mickey did a great job of selling the battle. Um, he pissed DNA off a little too much. Like, it's certain battlers that if you don't piss them off before the battle, they just gonna go in doing their regular shit. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna feel like they got a chip on their shoulder. Not gonna feel like there's no pressure. Mm -hmm. But as hard as Mickey Fax went in the promo and everything he was doing to rile DNA up, mm -hmm. that shit actually worked in DNA's favor. But my thing is with <clears throat> DNA, what people who are who battled him should understand or who are planning on battling him. You need to understand DNA at a drop of a dime, he will change his whole three rounds mm -hmm. on site. And yeah. he's he will freestyle a whole battle because he's done it before. Yeah, and like especially if you get him to a certain point. Like remember when um Oh my gosh, who was he battling when he said the old red bar? Oh, uh, was it twerk? Yeah, I believe so. Wait. What wait, what old red bar? Remember when he said deactivate his voice now he yeah, old red. red. Um was that twerk? Yeah, I believe that was twerk. It might have been it was somebody. But that like for for him to <clears throat> just like off the top just do something like that. Yeah. In the middle of his round. Like he if you piss him off. If you get him to that extent, he will finish you. Yeah. And DNA is fire. That's another thing. I got to stop sleeping on DNA. But yeah. DNA, the thing is, he has like... He'll have battles where it's just like he's just regular doing his regular rapping shit. And it's those battles where like... It's like pressure put on him. Like his opponent really trying to box him into a corner. And then he really like overcomes all that and gets him the fuck out of here. You know, um, Mickey Fax was good. Mm -hmm. He wasn't crazy. Like, Mickey had a lot of dry spots, you feel me? And for somebody like Mickey who really, like, studies this and is really, like, an avid battle rap, like, he did me a fact. Like, he one of the niggas who was at all them old battles and shit. And even mm -hmm. all the shit's off camera that we haven't seen, mm -hmm. he's been at those joints. So he um, should have known better than to come as light as he did against the end. I think that he was, again, making the mistake that a lot of people do that because he's somebody people were just gonna automatically you know like that the battle was going to be he's gonna turn the venue into his gas station yeah I, I think this the thing them celebrity niggas that he fuck with like them heavy punchline niggas like Lupe and Los mm -hmm. they gonna fuck with his material over DNA probably because it's a little more intricate mm -hmm. but come on DNA was rocking that room on mm -hmm. him like the whole the slip me and Mickey joint that I damn near lost my glasses over. Oh, that was funny. Um, oh my God, where did your glasses go? Yo, that was crazy. That was crazy. Like he he just he was DNA was wild on him. You feel me? So I gotta say DNA three zero. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I like how Mickey ended his third with the whole clearing up, you know, the stitch thing and mm -hmm. throwing the Charlie thing out there. I thought that was dope. Charlie but, has some explaining to do. Yeah. It, <laughs> but Mickey had just enough in each round to not get by. Yeah. For it to just be a regular loss. You feel yeah. Like for, so. I mean, he, he definitely had somewhat of a crowd reaction in all three of his uh, rounds. So it's not like you can say he totally lost. Like it was like cricket, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, 3 0 DNA. Queens. Yeah, Mickey Fats did a URL battle and didn't have to do a PG. I wonder how them PG niggas feel. You know niggas be making making Me. shit out of that. Like, even though Mickey's an industry nigga, he's, you know, far surpassed having to do a PG. But it's just like, I'm pretty sure there's some niggas there that's like, damn, I had to do three PGs. Why Mickey ain't have to do them? Because Mickey is a much bigger person than you are. Like, in, to, in real life. Like, not in just this battle rap world. Like. So. Honestly, people who are saying that about other individuals need to really look at themselves in the mirror and see that your name is not going to bring 
in the ticket sales that are needed for the league to prosper. So they don't care if you are someone who does a good amount on your home league. If you cannot do that all around, like if you're not known, if you're just known in one league, mm -hmm. then you're known in that league. You can sell that league's, you know, event out. But you have to know that you need to just get over yourself. Don't worry. It's, it's fine. Get yeah. over yourself. <laughs> get over yourself. Not everyone needs to do a PJ. Yeah. And and, and it's, it's the brainwashing. You know, part, part of it is done by URL. By making it seem like they just can't take it upon themselves to skip someone who they feel is worthy. This is my thing. URL just has to be firm about them being in control of their brand. Like, okay... You have the PGs, which is a process for newer individuals to URL, yeah. giving them a test run to see if they're ready. But there's certain people like Loso, who Beasley can come out and do a blog. Yo, we decided to skip Loso on the PGs because he's proven himself on other leagues. He do 100K per battle outside mm -hmm. of URL. And, oh please. You're getting super duper emotional about this. I'm just, it's just something I'm passionate about. Either way, he does a honey k per battle outside of URL, mm -hmm. and he's coming into URL bringing something to the table. But these other niggas are not bringing nothing to the table except rapping. Exactly. So it's like they should be able to to stand on that and just you know be able to. But when people crazy. complain, yo, why the so and so don't have to do a PG? This is what he bringing to the table. Let's examine what you bring to the table and match that up. Plain and plain and simple. Okay. You feel me? So. You are right, you guys start so seeing a little firm on it. 3 0 DNA. Yes, 3 0. 30 Bailey. Yes. One of DNA's best performances, honestly. That's another thing. That's one of his best joints. Like, he went In off. a very long time. Yeah. So. King Low, somebody coming for you. Somebody's looking for you. Yeah, I, w I would want to see King Low and DNA on Smack Volume 4. So, that's our recap of that. And uh, we'll be back. Read between the lines is on. Come and get red.